Hi, this is Greg Cook, your Chem 240 instructor. Let's get started with the next video. This is chapter one, talking about covalent bonding and molecular shapes. Let's talk about atomic structure. This is the basic, uh, lowest level structure we're going to talk about in this class. When we talk about the structure of atoms and the makeup of the atoms, we are thinking about the three components that make up atoms. Those are protons, neutrons, and electrons. And you can see here that uh, protons and neutrons have about the same mass. They're about 1.6 times 10 to the minus 27th kilograms. Now that's pretty small, but that makes up the bulk of the mass of an atom. The mass of an electron is 10 to the minus 31 kilograms, so it is significantly less than protons and neutrons. So when we look at the atomic mass, we're talking mostly about the mass of the protons and neutrons. Now let's take the simplest of all atoms, the hydrogen atom. The hydrogen atom contains one proton and one electron and no neutrons. This is a, a proton which is indicated at the nucleus as a plus charge because protons are positively charged and surrounding that is an electron. Uh, in a neutral atom, the number of protons equals the number of electrons in order to be neutral. That electron resides in a, a space where it's most likely to be found, which we call an orbital, and we'll get to that in more detail in a moment. Now we describe uh, atoms in terms of their uh, atomic number and mass number, and these are listed on the periodic table. As you can see here, the atomic number Z refers to the number of protons in the nucleus. And in a neutral atom, again, the number of protons has to equal the number of electrons. So again, in a neutral atom, this is also the number of electrons surrounding the nucleus. Uh, and the mass number on the periodic table, which we signify by A, uh, is the total mass, or roughly the mass in whole numbers of the atom. So you can see here, for example, hydrogen has a mass number of 1 and an uh, atomic number of 1. So that means there's one proton, and 1 minus uh, 0 would be 1, so there are 0 numbers of neutrons in here. So the mass is 1. Now there are isotopes. For example, hydrogen 2 or deuterium. Sometimes we call that deuterium. That has one proton, but has twice the mass. That additional mass comes from one neutron. That's very similar to a hydrogen. However, it's an isotope, which has a different number of neutral neutrons in it. Carbon, you can see here, has an atomic number of 6, which is 6 uh, protons in the nucleus, and a mass of 12. So there must be 6 neutrons as well. And with those 6 neutrons and 6 protons, there has to also be 6 electrons to make a neutral atom. Okay, we talk about electrons uh, and where they reside in terms of the orbitals. And those orbitals are described by quantum mechanics um, as a wave function. And there, so there are equations to describe the highest probability of finding an electron in a particular space for a particular orbital at a specific energy level. We're not going to deal a lot with um, uh, quantum mechanics in this class, so don't worry too much about that. I just want you to realize that these are all just mathematical probabilities of where we best find an electron. We don't know exactly where an electron is at any given time, but we can tell where it's most likely to be. As I mentioned, wave functions are also called orbitals, and those orbitals are arranged at different energy levels. There are various what we call quantum numbers that describe the energies and shapes of orbitals or regions where we expect to find electrons. Uh, don't worry too much about uh, N, L, and M. Uh, I just want to point out that the principal quantum number is just referring to the energy shell. So as you get the uh, lowest energy closest to the nucleus is the first energy shell. As you go out further, you have the second energy shell, the third energy shell, etc. And, and depending on the particular energy shell in the atom, um, that's made up of different orbitals of different shapes. Uh, that's described by the other quantum number the uh, uh, angular momentum describes those shapes. So when we talk about the lowest energy orbital, which was in what we refer to as an s orbital, it's spherical in shape. Um, and the one energy level, one s orbital, you can see here on the left, 
Uh, and as you go up to the S orbital that's in the second energy shell, it's a little bit larger in volume, so that's further away from the nucleus in terms of um, the space that, uh, of region where that electron could be found. So in addition to S orbitals, as you go up beyond the first energy level, we have uh, other kinds of orbitals as well, which are described here as a P orbital levels or D orbital levels or F orbital levels. Those um, different types of orbitals are associated with different um, atoms in the periodic table. So when we think about uh, S and P, that's what we'll be dealing with most here in this class because we're only talking about the, the first few rows of the periodic table. D orbitals are available in transition metals and F orbitals in the uh, higher uh, elements. Now P orbitals, mathematically quantum mechanics tells us that they're shaped like a dumbbell and beginning in the second energy level, uh, each energy level has three P orbitals oriented in the three different axes of the uh, axis. So one oriented in an x-axis, one oriented in a y-axis, and one oriented in the z-axis. So three orbitals all with identical energies so as we fill them with electrons to describe the electron configuration of an atom, they are filled one at a time uh, sequentially. I do want to point out that um, there is a property of electrons in that they have a spin, either uh, mathematically it's plus one half or minus one half, or sometimes we refer to that too as, as spin up and spin down. Uh, the Pauli exclusion principle tells us that um, only two electrons can occupy an orbital at any given time and they must be of opposite spins or paired spins. No orbital can contain more than two electrons. So when we think about atomic structure, the structure of atoms and where those electrons reside, uh, they can only be in orbitals in pairs at most. So here's some electron configurations, a table of some of the elements. And you can see these are listing the atomic numbers and the number of electrons that corresponds with that number of protons and how they are arranged in the different orbitals. I'll show you a little bit uh, more pictorially in a second. So if you can see here the hydrogen atom has an atomic number of one so that means there's one proton and one electron. That electron resides in the lowest energy orbital which is the 1s orbital. As you add another electron or you go to helium uh, you have two electrons and two protons so those two electrons pair up with opposite spins in the 1s orbital. That first energy shell now is completely filled. So this is stable and happy, if you will. Um, atoms are stable when the energy levels orbitals are filled, or the highest energy level orbital that contains electrons is filled. So in this case we have helium with a completely filled shell, and that's why helium is a stable atom. Whereas hydrogen is not typically found as just hydrogen atom, it's bonded with other things like another hydrogen to make hydrogen gas or other elements. So if you think about carbon, for example, here's carbon down here. Um, it has an atomic number of six, so it has six protons and six electrons. And then you start filling those orbitals according to energy. So here I'll divide these by energy. So the first two electrons go into the s orbital, the next two electrons go into the 2s orbital, the next energy level, and then these three p orbitals, which are all degenerate in energy, you start filling one at a time. So one of the orbitals has one electron, the second p orbital has one electron, and this one's empty. Now this is not a stable atom, just like it is. Carbon is usually found bonded with other atoms as well. Uh, so it's still missing. In order to be filled, you need an, uh, two electrons in each of these orbitals. So we're missing four electrons needed to fill that shell, or what we refer to as the valence shell. The valence shell of an atom is the highest energy shell that contains electrons. And ideally, we want that full. Okay, you're all familiar with the periodic table of elements, and uh, this is laid out in a very unique way to show you the different orbitals and how they're filled as you go from left to right. So starting with the first row, we have hydrogen on the left, and this is filling with one electron in the 1s orbital. So we refer to this as the s block of the periodic table. 
So this configuration of hydrogen, as I showed you before, has the first energy level, s orbital, with one electron in it. As you add another electron, you go to helium, which actually would fit right here on the periodic table, which has an electron configuration of 1s2. Now that's a filled valence shell, so oftentimes we put helium over here on the right because these elements are the stable, noble gases, which all have a filled valence shell. Uh, so you notice um, on this first row of the periodic table, there are no p orbitals in the first energy level. So this is the p block of elements. So this is an empty portion. Only when you get to the second row of the periodic table, now we're talking about the first energy level is filled. The second row, we're talking about filling the 2s orbital. So lithium would have an electron in the 2s. Beryllium would have two electrons in the 2s. Here's the configuration for this, 1s2. 2s2, okay, uh, and then uh, p orbitals, so boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, neon, they start filling the p orbitals, so one electron, two electrons, three electrons, four electrons, five electrons, and then six electrons, completely filled p orbitals. The third row also has s orbitals and p orbitals available, and it's not until you get to the fourth row or you start filling d orbitals, and that's these transition metals in the begin in the middle. We will not be dealing with the transition metals um, in this class, so we're mostly focused on s and p orbitals. So when we talk about atomic structure and bonding, you need to be really familiar with s and p orbitals. Here's some electron configurations for various elements that uh, show this in a little bit more pictorial view. So I have uh, the the empty boxes represent the orbitals that we're filling with electrons and let me just populate these for these various elements. Here you can see what the actual electron configuration indicating the electrons in their plus or minus spin uh, in these elements and why some are stable and some aren't. So you can see here lithium with an atomic uh, number of three. Uh, the first two electrons go into the lowest energy shell, uh, 1s orbital, and then the third electron goes into the 2s orbital. Notice the valence shell here uh, is unfilled. That's why lithium is a reactive metal and uh, will react to do different things. Carbon has six electrons, two in the 1s orbital, two in the 2s orbital, and then since the 3p orbitals are all equal energy, you start filling them one at a time until it's filled. And you notice there's still some empty space. If we were to fill this up, it would require four more electrons until you get down to something like neon, which has now everything filled. The 1s orb, uh, level is filled, and now the valence shell, the second energy shell, is completely filled, and it's stable and happy. So when we talk about reactivity, it is these unfilled valence shells of the atoms that I've listed here, for example, lithium, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, that indicates that there's going to be uh, ability to form bonds or give up or take electrons.